Open mouth equals open business. Right? I, I, I hear so many times that, that, that people, people say, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna buy a machine and, and, then, and then the business will come to me. I said no one ever. Like that's, <laughs> right? I see, I see that, that Alexander is, is a prime, prime, prime example of wearing the uh, wear, wearing, wearing your company's logo on all the apparel, right? To, to any event, right? I don't, see, I don't see many people doing that, but that is something that's absolutely free of charge, right? And then you, start, you strike a conversation, show, and, and at the same time, they see like, oh, what is that? Like, oh yeah, I do, I do embroidery for companies. Okay, not only do they know what you do and struck up a conversation, but at the same time, you just easily gave them a sample, of a visual sample of what you do and the quality of work that you do, right? That's what, when I think of this, this example, you know, having very, being able to leverage very easy ways and free ways to market your business, I mean, that is just something that's such a low hanging fruit that each and every single one of you should do. And at, at events like this, it strikes up a conversation at, at any event. It's like, oh, what is that on your shirt? Like, oh, that's, that's, a, that's, a nice, that's a nice piece of apparel. Or the, the, did, did you do that? Where did you get that? And it strikes up that conversation. <coughs> Anybody have heard, heard the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Right? Well, I would venture to, to go a step beyond that. It's not, it's not what you know, and it's not who you know. It's who knows you. It's who knows you. I've raised that all the time. <laughs> You know, if, if nobody knows you, you're not going to be able to, to, to start your business or, or expand, your, expand your business. It's a no-brainer, right? But many times our customers ask us that are starting out, okay, how do I get more customers? Go tell people. That's the first thing that you should be doing. Go tell people. Make a Facebook page. Get on social media and start posting some, some of your work, right? At the same time, master their craft. That's the first thing, first thing that you should do. So you should, be, you should be communicating constantly. You should be proud of your work and you should be showing off your work constantly. All right, so what are, what are some of the ways? First of all, we just talked about kind of the, the word of mouth, right? You do one piece of work, work for a good work for a customer, they might refer you to someone else, they, they spread the word. You know, some of our customers here have become evangelists of, of, of our brand. Not because we've asked them, because they just, they, they, they love us, right? And so, and, and so if, if you just do good, good work, you know, those things will follow. Word of mouth is not very scalable. It's, it's, it's not. It's not like an ad that you just put online and gets blasted out to, to millions of people. It's something that it takes time and it takes time to build that brand. But once you get that ball rolling, it's like, a, it's like an army of, of, of free advertising out there for you 24-7. Right? Number two, e email marketing. If you're not if you're not collecting email, or when you're generating these leads, you're not collecting people's email. You know how how do you expect to follow up with them, follow up and get in touch and hey and just check in. Hey, how's how's everything going? What else do you need? I know that you just ordered you know a dozen polo shirts you know a couple of months ago. Do you do you need more or do you need some caps along with that as well? Right, being able to have a method of communication on a constant basis with your customers. You know, people, people say, well, email is dead, it goes to junk mail, and, and no one ever sees it. Well, to be honest, here at Recoma, that's still our highest ROI generating channel, right? We have over 60,000 people on our email list, and probably many of you have heard about this event through email, right? Email and social. And last but not least, so, social media. If you're not on social media, it's first of all, it's free. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to pay a dime for it to get on there. Right? You, just, you just have to start posting. It takes time, it takes effort, but if you're importing something anyway, I mean, people that are very really good on social media in this, in this industry, when they're delivering an order to a customer, they'll, they'll snap a photo. When they finish an order of, of a dozen caps, they'll line it up before they pack it up and take a photo and post it. Right? It, it, takes, it takes a couple of extra seconds of, of effort, but it generates return down, down the line. Right? And, and I see this with a, a lot of our customers in our, in our Facebook groups, um, that they're posting their work all the time, right? sh sh sharing their work. It's like, hey, just did a, just did, um, a, a, a dozen caps for a local customer. And it's a nice thing order, and people pitch in and people engage. Right? So you do that on, on the public channels, and people will take notice. And a lot 
of our customers are generating business solely from, from that, not from advertising, not from you know uh, going to a ton of a ton of shows, but just on social media, just doing the things that they do normally anyways, but taking an extra few seconds to snap a photo of it and post it on social. media. All right. So now with all those um, with with all those ways, you, you've you've acquired the customer, but uh, the communication doesn't just stop there. That's only the tip of the iceberg. The journey is super long. You know, some of you might know that it, it costs three times as much to acquire a new customer as it is to retain a current customer. So once you've done, you've, if you've already done the hard work of acquiring them, don't lose them. Don't lose them. Make sure you are constantly, you know, in touch with them. You're constantly engaging with them. It's not a one and done deal. Right? If you spend all that effort up front posting on social, emailing, you know, going to trade shows, etc., and acquiring a new customer, I think it's in your best interest to think about ways to retain that customer. Not only by providing good service, but just being in touch. Okay? Prediction number four. This is one of my favorite ones, the, the, the last two. Yeah, pe people want things yesterday, right? Prediction number four, convenience will be the, the new status quo. It will be the new status quo. And I think it's something that's so undervalued because convenience is not something that's tangible. It's not like price that's more tangible. It's like, hey, if you offer low price, if you're, if you're cheap, it's not about going you, right? But convenience is something that's undervalued. It's something of, of a value add that you can provide that's outside of, of price, right? It's something that you can provide. And, and convenience in our world could mean you know, faster, faster turnaround time. You know, I will drop it off to you, or you know, I can I can turn around in, in one day, or I am open to rush orders. All of those things are a matter of convenience for your customers. Right? People want things um, yesterday. I mean, when we when people call in and ask about our equipment, and we ask them, hey, what's your timeline for getting a machine? It's like two two weeks ago. They're like, okay, well, if we sold time machines, it would be a lot uh, more profitable. But I can't turn back time and sell a machine, but. You know, they, they, you know, there are also people that that buy machines before they, even, you know, or they they will take the order before they get the machine, right? There are people that do that. And some of you might get might have gotten burned for that. Yeah, right. So people people want things yesterday. I mean, this is to prove a point that that people want things now, right? They're they you know, they're excited to jump into this. So what does this what does this mean for you, right? The days of on demand is here. It is literally here, and it's here to stay for good. Thanks to a small company called Amazon, <laughs> right? You know, they're only responsible for 50% of commerce and, and building warehouses on every other block like Starbucks, <laughs> right? Why, why, why do you think, why do you think, why do you think that they, they do that? They do that because they want to ship things to you in like an hour. That's their ultimate goal. You order it, and some guy shows up at your door an hour later, it's like, here, here, here it is. They're already doing some of that, or some of the supplies. They're already doing some of that, right? So it, it is it is critical that convenience becomes the new status quo, and it's going to be that way because of companies like this setting the standards. So you need to think about how your business is going to prepare for it down, down the road. And when I talk about convenience, it's not only about how fast you can do things. It's also about how convenient you can make the choice for your customers. People don't want to go through five shops to, to get to get everything that they need. It's like, hey, if you if, if you do only only pogo shirts but no caps and I have to go to someone else and then that person does both, then what's the point of getting in with you? Right? All else be all else being equal. Right? Be a one stop shop. And again, Amazon is setting the standard for that. You, you can buy anything on there. And that has become the, 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 the new norm. That has become what's driving consumer uh, behavior in the, in the future. So being that one-stop shop, if you're, if you're not offering a, a, a lot of different services, there might be a potential that you're losing that business. And us here at Recoma, we're doing the same thing. We realized this a couple of years ago. You know, we started with Embori being, uh, being our core and core business and, 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 bread and, uh, and bread and butter, but now we've expanded into heat presses and, and direct-to-garment and cutters and, and all these other things, right? We're expanding our services because we realize that we don't want you to go to someone else to buy a direct-to-garment printer when you need one and we don't have it 
and we have to refer you to someone else, and we potentially might lose that business if they carry embroidered machines too. So being a, being a manufacturer, it's our job to make sure that we can manufacture as many of the things as you guys need to keep it under one roof so that you guys are loyal customers, right? Okay, and last but not least, prediction number five, <clears throat> personalization is here to stay. And I think this is a super powerful point. And, and, the, and the reason why I have this as one of the, one of the key points is actually, it's, it's a funny story. Someone asked me on Facebook Live, on the monthly Facebook Lives that I do that, hey Henry, do you think that the apparel decoration industry or the embroidery industry in general is saturated? Is oversaturated? Um, and long story short, that's, that's the answer is no. And the, and the simple reason is that the demand is so high. You look around, every single business has some sort of need for personalization. They need to have their logo on it. They want to broadcast their, their brand, their hosting, an event. Right? And they need, they need customized apparel. They, they need customized goods. So personalization is here to stay. People want to have things that are one of a kind. And so it's, it's not, it's, it's the act of creating and selling customized goods is here to stay. It's not going, going anywhere. Right? And, and the reason for that, you know, a small company called Etsy uh, sells over $3 billion of customized goods and handcrafted goods on a yearly basis. And they're, and they're mainly here in the U.S., they're not really overseas. So only in the U.S., over $3 billion of customized goods from one platform. <coughs> if that doesn't convince you, one in four consumers are willing to pay more for a per, to receive a personalized good or service, right? That, that one of a kind piece. People are willing to pay a premium price for those personalized goods. Personalized to stand out from, from your, from your uh, competition. Making a simple item like a backpack that's a few dollars at Walmart into something that could be 20, 30, 40, $40, right? I think Laura later on has, you know, one of these, one of these days has a, has a seminar on how to how to 10x your, your, your profit. And one of those examples is being able to flip an item or 10 times what it, what it costs simply by personalizing it. Right, we also have one of our customers that, do, that, that customize these, these beautiful um, cocktail dresses 